At its most basic level, ray casting is the act of sending out an invisible ray from a vector 3 point in a specific direction with a defined length. Once cast, you can detect if the ray hits a base part or what we call a terrain cell. Let's just go right over to server script service, click on the plus icon and insert a script. From here, we're going to be doing our ray casting. So I'm just going to create a variable up here. It's going to say local raycast result is going to be equal to workspace colon raycast parentheses. And then here's where we need to provide two parameters. The first one is the origin for our raycast. And the second one will be the direction in which our ray is going to be going. So both of these parameters will take vector three values. So we're going to say vector three dot new. Now the origin, I'm just going to be doing from 0, 0, 0, basically the beginning and start of our world. Outside of this vector 3, or the ray origin, I'm going to put a comma, and then another vector 3 value, and then this is going to be the direction that our ray is going to go in. For this, I'm going to do 0, 0, negative 100 on the Z axis. Now a few things to note is that when casting a ray, the distance between the origin and the directional vector 3 is what we call the functional length or the magnitude of the ray itself. And the maximum length of the ray, it can be 15,000 studs. So keep that in mind. Let's drop down a few lines. Let's say if raycast result. Now the raycast result is returned whether or not the raycast itself hit an eligible base part or a terrain cell, which means that if it hits something like that, then we can go ahead and print out raycast result dot instance, for example. That's going to be the instance that the raycast hit. We can also print raycast result dot distance, which if you look right here, the distance between the ray origin and the intersection point. We can also print out raycast result dot position, which is the position of the intersection between the ray and the part. And then we can also print out raycast result dot material if we wanted to. This is the material at that intersection point. And then we can even print out raycast result dot normal, which is the normal vector of the intersected face. Else, then we're just going to print out no raycast result, just like this. So let's go ahead, click on play and see what happens inside the output. Let's click on the view tab and open up the output real quick. As you can see, there's no raycast result. That's because we don't have anything inside of the Z axis. So let's click on stop right here and let's create a part on the Z axis. As we know, the Z axis is the blue arrow. So we need to put a part going this way. And you can always check the position of your part to make sure it's in the right direction. For me, the position at the moment is negative 15.5 on the Z axis. Then I'm just going to scale this up in both directions to kind of make a wall for our part. Now let's click on anchor to make sure this doesn't go anywhere and then click on play and see what happens now. So now inside of the game, the instance is this part right here. The distance is 14 and a half from the direction. From the origin of our ray, I mean to say. The position is right here. The material is plastic. And then the normal is 0, 0, and 1, like this. So that's pretty cool to do with ray casting. Now we can also calculate directions. I'm just going to get rid of this real quick. Calculating direction is applicable when you can calculate an unknown directional vector 3 or the ray direction using a known origin and a destination. This is useful when casting a ray between two points that can change, such as from one player character to another. So let's say that we have the local ray origin, and this is going to be equal to our vector 3, 0, 0, 0. And then we have the local ray direction, and this is going to be equal to vector 3 dot new, 0, 0, negative 100. You need to understand that the ray origin plus the ray direction is going to equal to the ray destination and that the ray origin plus the ray direction minus the ray origin will equal to the ray direction minus the ray origin another thing that's pretty cool is that the ray's direction equals the destination minus the origin so our ray direction would be equal to ray that uh our ray destination, which once again would be our ray origin plus our ray direction. So we can actually write as ray origin plus ray direction 
as our ray destination and this would be minus our ray origin let's create the ray origin as the game dot workspace dot spawn location dot position and then our ray direction will be game dot workspace dot part dot position this is the part that we had oops i mean to say let's rename this to our ray destination all right I'm just going to get rid of this right here and then say our local ray direction is going to be equal to our ray destination minus our ray origin. That's going to get our ray direction as I told you guys. And then from here simply we can just copy this ray cast result from down here and then paste it all the way down here below this stuff. And we can just simply change the parameters inside of it so we have the ray origin and then the ray direction just like so. And once again, we simply say if raycast result, then we'll print out raycast result and let's click on play. So you can see the raycast result as all of our different properties right here and our values, which is pretty cool. You can feel free to experiment with this however you would like to and try and test out any form of raycasting, which you would be comfortable with. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.